So what do you think? You think this salad is big enough? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know what I was thinking about this morning? I put on a song this morning and it brought me back to a very specific place in time in my head and a very specific feeling. And I was like, man, this is amazing. And I thought to myself, I'm like, that right there is the kind of music that I want to make. Not necessarily a genre, not necessarily like a type of music, but music that brings, the second they hear it, people feel something and it brings them to a place. That's the goal. So ladies and gentlemen, take a look at this. Look what I did today. I planted me some romaine lettuce. Looking pretty good. Dude, honestly, let me tell you, this was a tremendous amount of work. I was like covered in sweat. It was a lot of work. I, I, you know why? One, I have to dig up all the grass. Two, there's a lot of rocks, like a lot of, a lot of rocks like this, I, almost like gravel. And I don't know why, and I have to get past that layer. And once I get past that layer, it's pretty easy to dig through. Um, what's funny though, each row is two cells of these. So there's four in each cell, obviously, and uh, there's eight in each row. I actually have eight left right here. So technically, I actually have a whole extra row of romaine lettuce to go. And then I have Swiss chard. I have two... I've got a good, good amount of Swiss chard to put in. Look at this, though. All my little seedlings are coming up. This is uh, red beets. This is a lavender. I don't know why only one lavender came up so far. These are, I gotta thin these out. This is broccoli rob. These are arugula. This is kale. These are yellow beets. This is, oh look, the cayenne pepper's finally coming up. That's great. This is ba more basil. Oh my gosh, there's so much basil. These are cabbage right here. Wow, I'm gonna have a lot of, I'm gonna have a lot of stuff going on. These are all corn. Uh, this is cauliflower. Gonna have a lot of cauliflower. And this is lettuce that has, oh wait, we got one little tiny baby lettuce coming up right there. Do you see him? Little guy right there, one little lettuce. Yesterday I planted my cilantro over here. That's cilantro or coriander, depending on when you harvest. That's dill I planted. But next to the romaine, I'm gonna put spinach tomorrow. So this is spinach, it's actually looking really good. It's super hearty. Uh, I wanna put the spinach next to the romaine. And then you probably behind them, I'm thinking of putting these. These are, well, we got a lot of stuff going on. This is, um, these are onions. I gotta put these in soon, I feel like. I'm noticing that they didn't thin them. See how there's a couple per cell? They didn't thin them, which means that there's only one per cell, which is kind of interesting. So it's interesting to see what you have to thin and what you don't. I don't know why these aren't standing up so good. Could use a little bit of water. These guys a little water too. These are peppers, and I'm actually thinking of making the pepper, I'm gonna call it the pepper mill, the pepper mill over here, because there's a bunch of peppers that I have, and I'm thinking of putting over here which is next to my berry section, which is over there. Very interesting little fact that I learned today. Did you know that all peppers, all sweet peppers, like red peppers, red bell peppers, green bell peppers, orange bell peppers, they're all actually the same pepper. They're all green peppers. It depends on actually when you pluck them for maturity. So they start off green, just like tomatoes. And the more you let them mature, the more they turn red. It's just, it's harder to sometimes keep them um, when they get mature because it, it takes a while one uh, People get impatient and two like it opens things up to like disease or like disease of the plants or animals Like it's sometimes just a little harder, but it's the same plant. I learned for a ride down Go the car. So my plan with it with all the go oh, I gotta close the garage one sec Ugh. My plan with all this garden stuff is to grow as much as humanly possible for me, what's possible for me. Freeze as much as what's possible. I wanna, I really wanna eat as much as I can from stuff that I've grown or locally produced. So obviously I can't grow cheese or make cheese. So I wanna go to the farmer's market, get cheese from there, local eggs. Like I've just been really bothered lately uh, how things are just mass produced. And all the stuff that they use to produce the stuff, I don't want a part of it. I want. I don't know. I don't know. It's just been really bothering me. So that being said, speaking of local healthy stuff, I am on my way to pick up a quarter of a cow. For the past couple of years, my dad has been buying a cow butchered that's raised in upstate New York. 
completely grass-fed, completely organic. Checks all the boxes. What he's been doing is like, he's been divvying it up for people because I, I think it's like 600 pounds of meat hanging weight and then when you like take out all the bones and stuff, I think it ends up being like 400 pounds of meat. So that means it's about 100 pounds per person. We're getting a quarter of it. I'm getting a quarter of it. He's getting another quarter and two other people are getting quarters. So I'm getting a quarter of a cow. Um, what they do is they take the whole cow, divvy the whole thing up in quarters, and you get your healthy, natural cow. And I'm really excited about that. So chopped meat, steaks, prime ribs, porterhouses, you know, ro roasts, everything, including some like certain parts of the, like, the bones and stuff that have meat on them for like stews and stuff and stew meat and I'm I'm ready. So I'm on my way to the bank to get cash out to, to, to pay for it, uh, but I'm ready, man. We're, we're eating as healthy as possible. In the meantime, on the way there, I'm actually going to call my vocal coach's boyfriend. She gave me his number because he is, as, as a profession, one, I believe he gives lessons, but two, he is a guitar luthier, so he works on guitars, and his specialty is vintage guitars. So because I lost my guitar, which I actually have to call the police and make a police report because Manny, my friend, recommended that I actually document it with the police because if somebody stole it and they get caught stealing something else and like the police sees their possessions or something like that and they see that there's this guitar there that matches the, the description of another stolen item, I can actually get my guitar back. I'm like, that's brilliant, dude. Like 100% going to do that. But in the meantime, while I'm in the shop, I want to get his opinion and see what he thinks and see if I can afford anything in his budget or in his range or if he's completely because he works on vintage guitars out of my range so let's give him a call hey hey man how are you I've heard some wonderful things about you you can get a really cool and you want an acoustic guitar I well, yeah so acoustic with some electronics yeah. so I could plug it in if I were you what I would do is buy some kind of vintage guitar okay. like I can brainstorm and put a uh like just a sound hole pickup in it uh -huh. and then you drill out the m pin and you just plug it in like anything else okay and that's kind of your best bet because just replace what you had uh-huh and you buy like a used martin or something they're not going to become it, they'll just become undesirable as time goes sure. on and i think the vintage ones sound better and i'm not talking like crazy old and fragile like you can get a really good sounding kind of under the radar guitar all right man I'll, I'll talk to you later i appreciate it peace so really interesting insight that he said he's like if you're willing to spend a little bit like uh, i told him that my budget was like three thousand and like in reality i, I probably won't spend three thousand he's like honestly you could get something really good for like you know 15 to 2000 range and he's like honestly that's probably a better move because you i mean my my guitar was you know 800 brand new he's like in all reality you spend that money now but like it's not worth anything later like they don't maintain their value very much they kind of e either lose their value or maybe stay steady but typically lose their value see the benefit with buying something vintage is like you actually buy something that is that has value already it'll either one increase in value or at least increase in value with inflation so like you're not buying something that will lose value one day. You, you, you're actually at least keeping your money safe in an asset to some degree, which is a really, really interesting analogy. And, and so like I spend, you know, 800 now or even on the really low end and get something OK, but that's not going to last forever or not going to last really well or spend, you know, a little bit more now and it's going to keep its value sound way better. And it's like. It's a, that's a tough thing. You know, I really wasn't planning on spending this money, man. But who knows? I got to think about that. He also recommended that I buy an acoustic, a fully acoustic, and then put pickups inside the fully acoustic. I think there's got to be more of this somewhere because it's usually a boatload of chocolate. Got on you see how much meat that was? We got meat for quite some time. I also picked up, my dad had some uh, local Long Island striped bass that was uh, caught yesterday. So, just gotta make sure I didn't get fish in my car. So that's exciting, now that helps with dinner tonight. Now I know what we're making for dinner. Cause all that, all that meat is like pretty frozen, so no meat for dinner tonight. Long Island striped bass. We got two coolers over here full of meat. Ready for this? All that steak, baby. 
Then we got steak in here. Then we got all that chopped meat. We are packed out. Double layers in here, double layers in there. Got the meat locker going on down here. New York State, grass-fed, organic, everything.